So welcome. My name is Ramon Morros, and I'm going to present you <coughs> some results on face recognition. Uh, first, this slide has been created by Elisa Sairol, who was the, <coughs> the person who the last year uh, gave this gave this module. Okay. I create some, I put some modification. So this is a. <coughs> short idea of what I will show you. First, we will define what face recognition is, and we will look at some applications of face recognition. Then, we will see the most popular databases for training face recognition systems, and <coughs> we will see some of the principal works in the last in the last year. Okay, making more attention to the. the more important algorithms in, in the field. And finally, I will present you some challenges that are still open in the face recognition field. So the applications of uh, face recognition are, <coughs> are wide. Okay, There are a lot of uh, applications. Uh, most of them we are familiar with, for instance, uh, payments. In the, uh, some, nowadays, there are some applications for your mobile phone that allows you to use your face as an uh, authentication system. Okay? Also for access and security, to access several places, you can use some sensors that record your face and decide if it's you or not you. And this can be combined uh, with other uh, physical, uh, with other methodologies, okay, using a two-factor uh, authentication. For instance, you can combine your face with some uh, key or some kind of card or password or code or whatever, and this way you can increase the security of the system, okay? If you don't want an extra security, what you can do is just drop the, the other modality and only use your face, that it's more uh, <coughs> convenient, okay, it's less cumbersome than entering a PIN or something like that, okay? But also there are other applications in automatic video indexing, for instance. Nowadays there is a lot of uh, hours of video, and if you want to look in a huge database, uh, of, uh, in a huge video database, and do you want to recover something from this database, you need indexes, okay? And for these indexes, the identity of the person, it's, it's very relevant. So detecting and recognizing the persons, the, the relevant persons that are in the videos, it's very important for this reason. There are also applications in criminal identification. Okay, for instance, if you read the newspapers, you will know that <coughs> most administrations have efforts in this field. Okay, in the FBI has a, a huge database uh, of the half the population in the USA and also in China there is a <coughs> quite uh, deployment of uh, security cameras okay to make surveillance of the, the population okay another different type of uh, applications it's in advertising okay in this case it's not strictly face recognition but some kind of face technologies where you can use uh, the faces to identify, for instance, the, the age of the people, of the gender, and this can be used to target the advertisement, the ads, to the specific, to specific people, okay? And finally, also in healthcare, there is a lot of uh, applications trying to use the, this also, this <coughs> facial expression analysis, okay? For instance, to diagnose some illnesses or <coughs> also determine if a person is in pain or not and the degree of pain, and also some other <coughs> efforts are to prevent the medication non-adherence, okay? To, to check if the people has taken the proper medication or not, okay? So, uh, of course, there are some applications that are <coughs> very problematic from a privacy sense of view, Okay, but there are others also that uh, can be quite, quite useful. Okay, so I leave you a couple of videos summarizing a little bit these, these applications. We have no time to, to look at the videos here, but you can take a look at home. Okay? 
I think they are quite interesting. Okay, so let's see <coughs> a global overview of uh, identification, or the, the face recognition. Okay, so usually what you have is two different kinds of system. Okay, we, can determine, we could classify in closed-set face recognition. In closed-set face recognition, you have a training database, and all the individuals that can appear at test time, okay, at the production time, do appear in this training database. So <coughs> you are sure that there are no people outside this database. Okay? And there is also the open set face recognition. In open set face recognition, you <coughs> the system will be pre presented with individuals that were not available, with, were, oh, that you don't have images at training time. Okay? This is the case in most real world applications. Okay, for instance, if you are trying to uh, find the faces in a video, for sure there will be a lot of people that are unknown and that appear only once and you are not interested in annotating these people. Okay, so you can make models, you can <coughs> have a database of several people that may have interest to you, but there will be hundreds, thousands of others where you don't have images at training time. But you have to classify these people as unknowns. Okay? So this makes the problem much harder, and the type of solutions are usually different. For the closed set free recognition, you can use any classification approach. For instance, you can train uh, a network, a BGG, or ResNet in a pure classification sense. Okay, and <coughs> when a new phase is entered into the system, <coughs> the system will output the most likely class, the most likely likely identity for this person. Okay. In an open set free recognition, you cannot do that, okay? Because <coughs> if you present the, a, a people that was not in the training set, the network will output an identity, okay? But it will be uh, a wrong identification. So in this case, what you have to do usually is to use very verif face verification. In face verification, <coughs> the idea is that you extract some kind of feature vector and you compare with the feature vector of the known people, okay? And <coughs> then using the, 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 distance be, the distance between feature vectors, you can determine if this feature vector corresponds to this person or to this person or to known at all. If the distance is too large, then you will, to the distance to all of the known uh, person vectors, then you will decide that this person is not in the database, okay? So, for the classification problem, for the closed set wall, it's enough to learn some separable feature. You know that uh, convolutional neural network can be seen as, <coughs> uh, uh, as producing uh, feature vectors for the input images. Okay, so so, so long as the as the the feature vectors are separable, okay then you can classify uh, <coughs> the input classes, okay? But in the, in the open set free recognition, this is not enough. You need to establish a margin, a large margin between the, the classes, okay? So that when and no people appear, <coughs> you can discard them because the, the, the features of the known people are very compact. <coughs> okay. So, <coughs> to train face recognition systems, we usually need large uh, databases, okay? Th there is a lot of people in the world, <coughs> and if we want to differentiate between different people, we need training sets that have a lot of the identities. In the last years, <coughs> th there has been like an explosion of uh, large uh, data sets, okay? And some of them, for instance, and this Microsoft Celebrity One Million, that contains one million different identities. And for instance, for the 100,000 <coughs> top identities, there is uh, 10 million images. Okay, so we have a lot of images to train the, the different systems. Okay, for instance, Megaface also has almost five million faces using more than half a million different identities. 
uh, select faces, it's <coughs> 10,000 identities, OK? Uh, there is also YouTube faces, faces scrap, and Casia web faces, and BGC faces too. For instance, it's almost 10,000 identities with more than 3 million different faces, OK? All this, um, the problem with all these databases is that sometimes there are not this junk because most of these databases are created from celebrities, okay? And why from celebrities? Because celebrities are easy to mine. Most of these databases are created automatically by mining some the, the internet and most of them use, for instance, uh, databases such as EMDB, that is a data set of uh, a website for films containing information about the actors and so on, okay? So then you can collect images from here and you know the identity of these persons. Otherwise, you have to supervise and put the identities by hand, okay? So the problem here is that most, is that most of these uh, databases okay, are overlap. The people appearing in most of them is the same people, okay? So you just not, ca you cannot uh, create a, a really huge database by agglomerating the different databases. You have to take into account that there are some repetitions. On the other side, you have, yeah. In the slide before or after? This one? Okay, so this is just uh, an image to... Well, <coughs> no, th this is just uh, put an image to decide if these people and these people are the same or not. So, so, yeah, you have to decide if they are the same or not. No, it's just to avoid a white space here. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I want to also to show you there is also other databases that are for testing. For instance, the labeled faces in the wild or <coughs> evolutions of that. Okay, so there is a commonly used databases, face databases where the people test the, the systems. Okay. Also the mega face and celebrity faces one million contain also testing uh, splits for uh, creating competitions and so on. Okay, so this is uh, an overview of the main contributions in the field, okay? So it starts the, with uh, using deep learning, it starts more or less at 2013 by the appearance of AlexNet and the, the, the first systems we were using, uh, for instance, the AlexNet or BGGNet and so on as classifiers, okay, for closed set face recognition, okay? At the same time, <coughs> there are <coughs> other works that use these, these networks, okay, for extracting feature vectors and then using some kind of uh, applying for verification, okay? Th then we will see how. For instance, uh, the face in 2014, face net in 2015, and BGG face, okay? Uh, sphere face in 2017 and BGG phase two. And of course, these, uh, these solutions are based on the basic classification networks, but used as a feature extractor. So let's start by the deep phase architecture. Okay, so it's an, uh, <coughs> a work by, by 2014 created at Facebook and it's a convolutional neural network with a particularity that some of the filters are not purely convolutional, are what is called locally connected networks, where that is some kind of special kind of uh, convolutional network where the weights are not the same <coughs> in, a, in, in every layer, okay? In, in a given layer, the different positions, the, the weights can be different, okay? And this is a powerful solution, but the problem is that <coughs> as the localization is uh, important, the images need to be correctly aligned, okay? All the faces have to be correctly aligned, okay? And this, uh, in real situations, it's hard to do, okay? In this work, 
they try to frontalize the faces so that convert the faces to, to, a, to a frontal view and aligning them using the eyes and the, and the nose. Of course, this is only working for high resolution images because in low resolution images, um, <coughs> aligning, finding facial features and aligning, it's, uh, it's quite complicated, okay? It's not, and it's not always working. In this work, <coughs> the, the, they use a convolutional neural network for feature extraction and then for verification, they try to use two different uh, approaches. The first one was to use a weighted chi-square distance, okay, between features. In verification, you try to decide if two images are coming from the same person or not, okay? So it's a binary response. So the idea was to extract the feature vectors for both images and then compare those images using some kind of distance. In this case, the chi-square distance, okay? a weighted chi-square distance where these weights were learned by a linear SVM. Okay. The other approach was to use a CMS network. CMS network, it's a solution that tries to perform metric learning. In metric learning, you try to generate embeddings that have the property of be, that the vector, the feature vectors are close in the Euclidean space for faces of the same person and far away for faces of different persons, okay? So you learn the embeddings so that they uh, fulfill this property, okay? You can do that by duplicating the, the convolutional ne neural network, so the weights here and here are the same, okay? So you have the two different images <coughs> through the same uh, network, and then there is an extra layer that tries to <coughs> minimize this distance between the, the embeddings for the faces of the same uh, person and to maximize this distance from faces of the same person, okay? So we are modifying the embeddings so that they fulfill this property, okay? And, and at the end, we have uh, some feature vectors that are very compact for all the, for each class. Okay, so at the end, <coughs> this is only for training, but at testing, you just extract feature vectors and you compare these feature vectors using the Euclidean distance. Uh, and if they are, if the Euclidean distance is small, you decide that they are from the same person, and if it's large, you decide that it's from different person. Okay? Another approach in this uh, same in the same area is the face net that is using a triplet network. It's very similar to the CMS network, but in this case, you train the network by using tri <coughs> triplets of images, okay? So for each triplet, you have an anchor image, a positive image, that is <coughs> an image of the same identity from the anchor, and a negative image, that is an image from a different identity from the anchor, okay? So you have an anchor, a positive identity, and a negative identity. Usually, you will expect that the positive identity is closer to the anchor than the negative, okay? So, in some cases, this is not the case. If the, if the feature vector, if the embedding is not, uh, <coughs> is not working properly, so we try to modify the embedding so that this is true, okay? using the triplet loss function. In the triplet loss function, <coughs> we minimize this, that is the distance between the anchor and positive, minus the distance between the anchor and negative, plus this alpha, that is a margin, okay, <coughs> to, to make sure that we are separating even more the positive from the negative. That, that are <coughs> the difference between positive and negative, okay? So also, in, as in the previous case, the network is, <coughs> is the same, the weights are the same in the three uh, versions of this network, and at the end, we get a feature vector that is discriminative by using just an Euclidean distance. Another work is DeepID2, 
that it's uh, also using um, a CMS a CMS uh, approach, but in this case it's combining <coughs> uh, the uh, verification loss and an identification loss. Okay, the verification loss it's the same loss that for the for the CMS uh, network. Okay, so it's something like that. Okay, so are for the identities of the same for images of the same person who are minimizing the distance and for the uh, images of different persons who are maximizing because this is negative also using a margin this margin it's a number that tries to separate more uh, these cases okay this is for the verification and for the identification the loss function is, is the the cross entropy okay and in this case the training it's combining uh, both the identification and verification losses in this case also to, to improve the results they use uh, not only uh, a detection of the face but several patches in five, 25 patches okay and for each patch they extract a uh, feature vector of 160 dimensions and they concatenate these 25 feature vectors into one large uh, 4,000 dimensional uh, feature vector okay this is because <coughs> even though we have uh, good face detectors sometimes the, the alignment of the face detector is not perfect sometimes you correctly detect the face but uh, not exact no, no, not the, the detectors do not crop exactly the position of the face and the algorithms are uh, affected by this lack of precision in the cropping of the face okay so by using several crops they minimize this this problem in this case also okay after once we have the, the feature vector this deep id2 uses a joint bayesian model where each person each, each, uh, each feature vector is model in this way like it's uh, each feature vector is considered that there is a part that represents the identity and a part that represents the variations intrapersonal variations okay so if we have an Im uh, different images of the same person with different poses, with different expressions, okay? There is this part that represents what is intrinsic to the person, and this part is the small variation for changes in expression, okay? Uh, this can be modeled during training, and using, using that, using that uh, probability distribution, <coughs> it's possible to compute this log likelihood ratio test that will <coughs> provide the, the final uh, probability that two images are from the same person or from different person. Finally, the last one that I will review is a sphere phase. Okay, in the sphere phase, they realize that <coughs> the softmax functions, in fact, it's uh, having or it's creating feature vectors that have some kind of mm, angular uh, represent uh, angular uh, representation okay for instance this is a toy example with two classes and this is the feature vector is a painting the feature vectors in the in a two-dimensional space see? as you can see using the softmax okay the results are not very good for using these euclidean distances okay because sample here and a sample here are more similar are they have a smaller distance okay so in, in inter class distances can be smaller than intra class distances for, ins for instance this vector and this vector are from the same class and there is a large difference between them but if you see that you will see that they are aligned in a more or less in the same angle okay so here comes the idea of using the angle as a classificator. So ideally, I could put a frontier, a decision, a 
decision plane here, hyperplane here, separating the two classes based on the angle between the, the feature vector. Okay? But if you try to do that, to do that using the angle to classify, softmax is not providing <coughs> uh, enough uh, discrimination for this. Okay? So then the idea of the authors is to modify the softmax loss function by <coughs> In fact, the softmax loss function can be represented in this way, where this W and B are the weights and bias of the last uh, fully connected layer. And then, by making sure or constraining that this is one and the bias is zero, we have, and we can make uh, sure for that in the, in the, training, in the training process, okay? they have this modified softmax loss function and for the modified softmax loss function it can be seen that <coughs> this modified softmax loss, softmax loss function it's a little bit more discriminative and if you project this in, in a sphere okay, if you project the, the features in a sphere okay, the angular separation is larger with this modified softmax function okay? so you can put and hyperplane separating based just on the angle. Then, by an evolution of that, you can use also to, to further separate the, the feature vector, you can use a margin, uh, an angular margin. Okay, so try, they try to increase the angle between the different representations by using this factor M. And in fact, this can be done by using a loss function of this type, where this function is nothing else than an evolution of this cosinus here, okay? And with this modified angular softmax, <coughs> you can make sure that the features are much more discriminative <coughs> and can be separated by using an angular using the angle between the, within the features, okay? The, the effect of, of the margin of this parameter M can be seen in this, uh, in this plot, okay? So when, when we are increasing the value of the margin, what we are doing are, is separating more and more the features of the different classes, okay? And this is a projection into a sphere showing how the classes can be more and more separated by increasing this margin. And using that, well, they achieve quite very good results with <coughs> much less training images. For instance, they are using wet face that is using about 500,000 different images. And the best result is from FaceNet that is using 200,000 million images for training. Okay, so it's much, much less. And this is important because training with 200 million images takes a lot of uh, computational effort. Okay, to summarize, uh, we have still some open challenges, okay, in field recognition. Quite, nowadays, they are quite very good systems for field recognition, but there is a lot, still a lot of challenges. For instance, in the cross-pose face recognition, Okay. If you have frontal images in your training set and then you try to test with um, profile images, then the performance is dropping quite a lot. Okay. Also, the age of the persons is a, it's a problem in systems from free recognition because we experiment a lot of uh, changes along the time. Okay. So, and we are quite different when we are old, when we are young. There is also a lot of factors like makeup, uh, scarves, and whatever, and other things that you can wear that are a, a challenge for face recognition. Another problem is illumination. Of course, if it's a really poor illumination, uh, <coughs> the usual systems cannot, the, the RGB cameras have a poor performance, so <coughs> using uh, near infrared it's uh, sometimes an option, but then you have to train the systems for near infrared uh, uh, cameras. For low resolution, in, in, in a lot of cases you have a distant camera 
that can capture only low resolution images and then most of the solutions <coughs> here are, are quite difficult and also photo sketch face recognition you draw sometimes you can draw some lines and you want to check if the uh, using that you can to recognize people other problems that are for training for instance is the few shot face recognition sometimes you only have some <coughs> a few images to train a recognition system because you cannot collect more images okay or 3d face recognition because there are a lot of problems with um, cheating the face recognition system you can put a, a picture inside the, the face recognition system so to avoid that we can rely on other systems like 3d face recognition the problem is that 3D for 3d face recognition there are not a huge data set with a lot of images okay the the, the number of images in 3d uh, <coughs> That data sets it's much much smaller than for RGB images okay okay and if you are interested in in this uh, subject we are we have a small team with Elisa Sairol and we are working mainly in <coughs> open set deep learning at this moment and we have participated in several challenges so if you are interested contact us uh, because we will have something for you. Okay, any questions? So thank you.